Welcome back! Today on Dialed In DIY, I'm hacking into a dying dustbuster to answer two questions. Should I fix it, or should I just salvage it for free parts for future projects? If you're asking why I'm considering chop shopping this, just check out the charge. Yes, it was fully charged before I turned it on and it took about 30 seconds for it to die. So let's just go ahead and dig in and see what we can do with this old handheld vac. I'm gonna start off by taking off all the easy detachable parts. A quick look around the outside and you can see that it's held together with seven screws. So all we have to do is get a Phillips head screwdriver, pull them all out and we'll be ready to pry it apart. I've assumed that the battery is most likely the problem, but the first thing I really wanna do is make sure that that is the only problem. There are two halves to the housing assembly and with all the screws removed, one side comes off really easy. This little shrink wrap package of what looks like mini toilet paper tubes is actually the battery pack. So we're gonna pull that out and we see that it is a 14.4 volt battery. After a quick look, I'm really pleased to see that there are no visible defects or actual evidence of corrosion or bulging. That's a good sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the positive and negative leads from the battery so that I can know where to track back in the future and give it a test run with it plugged in and the battery removed. It didn't work, which is what I expected, but I'm gonna put the battery back and try it again and see what happens this time. Essentially what I'm doing here at this point is checking everything to see how it's working, and I was able to find that the charging socket, charging indicator, the on-off switch, the wiring, the motor, and the fan all seem to be working just as they're supposed to. That's a good sign too. At this point, I am convinced that it's the battery that is the problem, but I do want to take a closer look at the motor so I can see what other options I have if I decide to salvage this for a future project. That means I actually want to get a closer look at the motor itself so I can make sure that the inner workings seem to be fine and that there's no signs of corrosion on the inside of that either. So there's two tabs that are holding this little plastic cover on. I'm going to push those in and pop that little plastic piece off the top. Whenever I'm opening a motor out of a device, the first thing I like to do is see if there is a positive and negative designation marked on the motor. If there's not, I mark them myself. Once I have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the wires, take a closer look, and then work at cleaning this up. Get a can of compressed air and clean out all the dust and dirt just like you were cleaning out a fan in a computer. As you can expect from a motor inside a vacuum cleaner, there was a lot of dirt built up on the inside of this and I'm glad I cleaned it out. It gave me a good chance to get a really good look at the motor and realize it's in good shape. Just for my own entertainment, I decided to experiment a little by trying to bypass the circuit board and go ahead and work this without the battery and the PCB still in place. But as I expected, it didn't work that way. Remember to be really careful if you do any experimenting like this. You're doing so at your own risk. Just be careful not to touch any metal parts when you have the electricity connected and keep away of all moving parts and any kind of electrical connections as well. So this brings me back to the first two questions I had at the outset. What do I want to do with this? Well, I think I've proved to myself that I could get a replacement battery and make it work. But there's a lot of great parts here that I could use in another project too. So I think before I make my final decision, I have one last little test I want to do. The motor is clearly labeled 14.4 volts, but the power supply that came with it is labeled at 17 volts, which means to plug it in directly wouldn't be a good idea. It needs to go through that PCB. So. I got an old power supply that's a 12 volt. I cut the plug off and we're gonna test it out running it direct. Once connected, it took me about three seconds to decide what I wanna do. I'm gonna use this in a future project. Sorry Dustbuster, but it's definitely time to give you some serious modifications. Hey, thanks for stopping by Dialed In DIY. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the video, let me know with a thumbs up. If you have some thoughts for me, let me know in the comments below. If you have the opportunity, I'd love for you to subscribe and check out some of my playlists. I've got plenty of other videos to come.